Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has been good to us. It's October the 17th, the year of our Lord, 2021. Uh, I want to welcome everybody to the service. Uh, I can assure you today that, um, that I'm going to be preaching to the choir because uh, I'm going to talk today on a very unique subject, the deeds of the flesh. Uh, the subject will be coming from uh, primarily Galatians 5. And uh, as I was preparing and looking at the, uh, the topic, the, uh, uh, the subject, the um, trying to hear the Lord over three or four days, I tried not to prepare it's something overnight or nothing like that. But it, it works out over time because he said, take this out, have this, that's you, that's me. And so you prepare like that. But anyway, as I was working through this, um, then I could uh, think about a half a dozen or so things in, a, in, a, in, in 72 uh, or so hours uh, where I saw the deeds of the flesh manifest. They don't always have to manifest verbally or physically. We also have got a mind. <laughs> and the mind has to be upon the Lord all, always. So I'm going to be preaching to myself today. And hopefully somebody might be blessed by the message that I'm preaching to Jim Landry today on the deeds of the flesh, on the operation of flesh and the spirit of God, and how uh, that is a, uh, uh, an issue there. It is a, a battle there. Um, in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, verse 3, is a, is a, a verse that God gave me when I was in uh, prayer and fasting and travail about 25 years ago at our other location for some individuals who had come into the church and they were having some family problems and were battling. And uh, uh, so there were some issues taking place and I wanted to try to help them, but I knew it was going to have to be some, some doctrinal correction because of the, the group that they came from, but my love was greater than my desire to correct. And I, I pray to stay there all of my life. I want to I want to serve God in love. And the essence of this whole message today, you're going to find the subtopic will be love. God is love. And and so I said, well, God, I, I you know maybe a little, little bit more time, maybe just a little bit more time, and maybe there'll be some transition. There'll be some uh, because the person has a wrong assessment about me because they came from a place where there's a lot of. Uh, in regard, a lot of uh, confrontation, a lot of uh, challenge, and I'm not one of those. I'm, I got one issue, and that's the devil. <laughs> I was it. And uh, of course, the pastor's in me. The pastor's always going to be uh, conduct and so forth like that. But the, uh, and so I was crying out that night about 3 or 4 in the morning. Uh, I went to sleep, and the Lord woke me up. And uh, I mean, he didn't wake me up. He gave me this in, in my dream. And he said, the Lord had appeared on old unto me, saying, Yea, I love thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And so the Lord was showing me the temperance of how you minister to other people. Don't forget what I did for you. And with that same spirit, you, you minister to others. And he took care of that situation the next morning, which was a Sunday morning, at the old place, at the old location site. And... I have never forgot that, and I've built upon that for the next 20 years or so. I've built upon that because the love that I'm experiencing now, I didn't have 10 years ago. I didn't have it 25 years ago. That was love, but it was in, in the degree of life that I understood the love of God. So it's a growing love, right? All right? In Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 16, it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, I want us to understand today that, that the, the critical importance of this subject, since the greatest conflict that you and I are going to have as Christians, is going to be a struggle in our spiritual walk. We're always going to have a war here. The war of the, uh, uh, the lust of the flesh is going to always be contrary to the Spirit of God, and they are contrary one to, to each other. To understand God's purpose in our spiritual life, we must understand what it means to walk in the flesh, to walk in the spirit. We need to know what this means. This is another one of the foundational series that I mentioned to you three, three weeks ago 
uh, Taylor Soul Messages in the Foundation. However, I reversed, I didn't reference my notes on this, even though I knew it was part of the foundation. I stayed with what I felt a long and short of it, and some other notes that I had uh, 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 per se. The Apostle Paul begins this whole chapter in chapter 5 uh, at the Church of Galatia as a continuation of chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and warnings here in chapter 5 that the Christians are to maintain their liberty, their call of freedom from the bondage of the law, and not to observe circumcision, but rather in verse 13 and 14, which are very key scriptures for today's text, to love one another. And this is what fulfills the law. People love, I can't, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it to you, you got to have it in you. God's got to bring in that kind of love. Uh, <clears throat> love is, 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 is the law, the law of God. It is the grace of God. God is love. And there was a push by many of the Jews during this time to the church that had been born again. Uh, and during this time, they were trying to persuade them to go back to the, to the uh, law, back to Judaism, back to legalism. What is the flesh? Paul used the word flesh to mean something that is totally human, with no special grace attached. In Paul's use of the terms flesh in Galatians, and I do mean in Galatians because Paul uses it in um, Corinthians, the first Corinthians, to, to identify a certain caliber of walk with the Lord, the natural man, the carnal fleshly, and the spiritual. That's not what we have. We talk about the old man that was supposed to be crucified. So in Paul's use of the terms flesh and Galatians, he does not simply mean possessed of a body or physical body. Rather, he means limited to only a physical body and one's physical strength that it contains. So flesh is what you do in your own power, in your own strength, what you can do yourself, which is to the church, legalism. The spirit without the letter, the letter without the spirit is legalism. It kills. Legalism is anything that I think I can do in order to make myself more righteous before a holy God. I fast last week, Brother Lambert. I gave my offerings. I was on church every time. That's all legalism. That doesn't mean anything to God. It doesn't mean anything. It, just, it shouldn't even mean anything to me other than the pastor has to, to call him to teach conduct and church order. And that's it. But he's, have, he's got to have love. You better love the sheep if we go teach it. Because the evangelists come up here and teach the same message. It's not like he's picking on you. It's just a different gift. I'm going to talk about gifts in a minute. It is human achievement. It's a form of self-righteousness when we walk in legalism and anything that we do to make ourselves more righteous to a holy God. That's, it's all legalism, people. And a self-righteous person, self person has no problems exposing those who offend me. I would not expose a person that offended me. I would not invite that type of uh, camaraderie or congregation response. You don't do that. That's evil. So I'm trying to identify flesh. I'm trying to tell you who Jim Landry was before Jim Landry got saved. And then after Jim Landry got saved, as Jim Landry was learning how to be saved. Because there was a lot of things in his flesh. There's still some things that God's... Paul put it like this in Romans. Put it under sorrowful repentance. Don't thank you to man. <laughs> this has got to be something that would to help me. I, know, I don't know what it is, but I know it's something there. When you get up here and start boasting about what you ain't got. It's like me saying I cast a demon out of you and they're all gone. I don't know. God may have something you else we want to deal with because it's like an onion and he peeled a bunch of layers off and you're so free. And a year later he said, now I'm going to dig you deep in your well. Show you something else that you didn't know was there. So who am I to say you're free? Ain't no one can say that. Right. And you know it in here, right? How do we walk in the flesh? To walk after the flesh is to seek life in terms of what you can accomplish of yourself. You can do all kinds of religious things in the flesh. The flesh can preach a sermon. The flesh can sing on a praise team. The flesh can give a devotion at the Lord's Supper. The flesh can lead people to Christ. You may not know that. 
<laughs> I was saved. I, where I was, I know it wasn't right because I would be parted with him. All right. But God saved me in that. I never judged him. I stayed friends all to the death. Not personal friends, but you know, go. You know, I was there. Hey, good to see you. I thank y'all for helping me when I was a young man. Even when I was in the, in the wrong kind of doctrine. I mean, if you go to them right now, when I was at Apostolic, if you go to the, and I play ball with this boy. All right, if you go to him, he say, man, he's always been good to us. In fact, some of you witnesses two or three years ago at the international conference, I had people from my old ministry, Apostolic, <clears throat> Jesus owned, and they were handling all the praise and worship. So you need to be able to go back to your old land box. Should be some favor. But at the same time, they know what you stand for, what they stand for, but they know you've got the discipline and the love that we can merge and work together, even though we may disagree on certain doctrinal points. Now, if it's bad doctrine, totally abomination, well, that's a whole different thing. The flesh can lead people to Christ, as I said. The flesh can go out and be very zealous in witnessing, can amass a great terrible, uh, 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 impressive list of people will show up for the, for the revival or whatever. Uh, the flesh can do these things, but it is still absolutely nauseating in the eyes of God. Oh, by the way, as I mentioned earlier, I'm preaching to myself. It's hard because when you have certain areas and capabilities of detection or discernment, you should be able to prove and test yourselves. So I am preaching to the choir here because there's, there's room here for growth in my own personal life. You may not see any flaws in my love towards you, all right? But we, each day we face everything from a bill collector to uh, somebody on TV making an announcement about a new law that we disagree with. And we, we tend to want to respond. I have tried to contain all responses as such. I've tried to dodge all of it because I have a bigger fish to fry. <laughs> I'm the preacher. I'm not for the souls of people. Y'all doing what y'all supposed to be. So I'm trying to die to all of that so you don't do this to me. Because I see a bigger picture. I see people saved all over the country. Man, I know what's going on here. I know what's going on in India, different places around the world. It's, bigger, it's big things going on. Indonesia. I just love what, what God is doing. There's nothing wrong with what is being done. Uh, but what is terribly wrong is the power that's being relied upon. So the ministries, God saves, people get called to salvation by people that profess to be Christians but are not. And, but the genuine, the salvations are genuine. Amen? <laughs> but the, the attitude and how a person that's in the flesh ministers is legality. And you're here to come out. And I'm operating some of those points out in a moment. Walking in the flesh takes no effort on our part, by the way. It comes quite naturally. What takes constant diligence is to learn how to walk in the spirit. <laughs> the flesh will create a false comfort zone. This is very important. I learned about comfort zones in, in college. Uh, I, I think this is something we should really find out if we got any. The flesh will create a false comfort zone you can walk and preach and witness in that comfort zone. But the problem with the comfort zone, many times it bars you and keeps you from being able to hear and follow the actual Holy Spirit of God because you come in that particular zone. For example, a person might be comfortable in their prophetic gift or another gift. They will announce their authority beforehand that they are God's prophet or God's prophetess. The problem with the announcement is we should not need to recognize a minister's proposed gift by the announcement of that gift. We should be able to recognize the gift that the Holy Spirit is ministering to us with by God in the minister. If you're listening in the Spirit, you will be able to determine which gift or gifts are being used by the Lord. So just follow me on this. Generally, the apostle giftings were sent on government the importance of expansion. The prophet gifts will provide guidance and warn people of their sins, repentance. The evangelists have the gift that touches the hearts of the hearers to gather together. 
pastors generally guard the sheep, teach church order and conduct, and teach us ground believers in the truth. You should be able to uh, be available to minister out of all of the gifts or each of the gifts of God as the Holy Spirit leads and not just your gift, which has become your comfort zone. And you will likely end up in the flesh if you only rely on your gift. It's not to say that God doesn't give us unique and particular gifts, but we need to be very open uh, to what God wants to do. And we need to be able to hear without announcing ourselves who we are in our gifts, we should be able to minister our gifts and those that have ears to hear should know that's a prophetic gift. Everything. Repentance, die to self, prophet. That was a prophet. That was a prophet. That was the word of a prophet. Even though it may be a teacher might be ministering that out. You need to know the difference. And those that have not, and the devil thinks the church is so immature that he's got us to stand up here saying, I'm the prophet and get you on the defense so you can hear my rebuke. That's not the way it's supposed to work. God is love. We heard the song. God is love. That's not the way he wants it to work. <clears throat> well, so the flesh, we have to crucify. There is no other remedy for the flesh but crucifixion. It's got to die, people. People like to promote gifts in people. Uh, but I strongly recommend that you get your confirmation from God and not the accolades of being. Some ministers today have their own wings. We see them at funerals a lot. Flocking together with those that can identify with their gift and that becomes a comfort zone. You see, because that's a spiritual principle by birds flocking together that have the same feather. And so we feel very comfortable around only deliverance, only prophetic, <laughs> only evangelists, that we need to find balance. That's all I'm saying. You know, sometimes some of the younger ones coming in, not here but all over, people are getting saved. And after about two services, they go out and they say, well, I, I, I didn't get nothing out of it. Because they ain't heard Because <laughs> that's what they were used to. And it takes a while. They have to break that down. They have to go home and deal with it. They have to fight those emotions and come back. And about three weeks later, praise God, they're free. So, some people have made their whole teachings week after week after week anti-tradition. And so that's a comfort zone. I mean, nobody knows more about Kate Sales, Bake Sales, Red Play anniversary than me, because I did it all. <laughs> I was born in the Academy, raised in Bethlehem, baptized in Bethlehem, been a temple in Elijah Muhammad, baptized in the name of Jesus. If I wanted to do this every week, it would be a comfort zone. But y'all out. That's why I need to preach you back in. <laughs> y'all. We all got out. Ooh, I didn't bring you out. God brought you out. Come on. Y'all know who brought you out. So, the flesh is what you do in your own power, in your own strength, what you can do yourself. And this is defined in, in Scripture as legalism. And here's a spiritual nugget. I kind of made a little note of this. Each of the works of the flesh have their spiritual counterparts, demons. And most people don't realize religious spirits. They gotta have a counterfeit to go against the spirit of, of the Lord. Because they are contrary to the spirit of the Lord. So there's a spiritual, there's a religious spirit there also being utilized by these spirits. Uh, and demons as the counterfeits. It's demons, religious spirits manifesting that preach the law. Law in your ministry conduct and how you ought to dress. Law in your diet and don't eat the pork. Law in the treatment of others. Uh, <clears throat> Y'all need to sit over here. I'll, this is my seat. You see, the sacrifice of animals today is a picture of the type of biting and devouring one another. <laughs> and that's what the flesh is being ate up in the building. To imply, let me show you how I feel about people. The worst of the worst of the worst is what I live for. All right? To imply or wish evil on somebody because they treated you bad, or didn't do what they supposed to do, or acted funny towards you, is to give disregard and, is, and, and irregard is sin. I don't even want to think like that because somebody do me wrong. 
I don't want to think like that, but it's the only person, the only way I made it in was a guy named John and his wife in Port Arthur and a few other people, and I was silly in my sins, selling insurance and catching my life, and they didn't say nothing to me, they just kept on loving me, said, we praying for you, come on, we you come visit the church. Now suppose they had to treat me like I was, and I was a plum, excuse the expression, a fool for the devil. I mean, I was out there, I was gangster, mentality, high as a kite, I mean, come on now, intellectual, I'm sitting out there talking to you after that, smoke, crack. come on now. All right, so what I'm saying is, if you got that feeling like, well, God gonna show what's wrong, God gonna, you wrong. That's why you got problems. That's why you got demons attacking you all the time. Because you got the wrong mindset, and you can get that out of certain denominations that you came from. Critiquing, critical, assessment. And so most of that I learned from the world, but I learned a lot of it in the church. Or in a church building. <laughs> All right. The only remedy for this flesh, people, is crucifixion. You got It's got to die. Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 24, it says, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with those affections and lusts. You got to fast. You got to move the plate. All right. You got to move the TV. The Bible says in Psalms, I will place no evil thing before my eyes. You can't get caught up in cosmic. You can't get caught up in a certain thing. And I know about this certain thing, because I remember a couple of years ago we was talking about uh, not the murder she wrote, but it was the other one. And so I said, I know y'all watching it, <laughs> but I forgot that other show or something. But anyway, so you have to also watch how you how the eyes is. It's like, here we are getting ready to have something. But I got to go catch the last of that show. My grandson won't be coming. Now, if I'm doing something, like I think I was studying yesterday or something, and I came in later to have something with him. If I'm doing something in a godly fashion, they understand that, okay? All right, but something's wrong when you got to finish your show and they're all in the family sitting at the table eating. That doesn't give a good picture. That doesn't give a We don't have that problem here. I know I'm singing to the choir. And, but maybe it, it will help somebody that's listening. But if you're listening with, yeah, I wish God give me another husband like that, give me another wife, then you're still in error. You're in the flesh. You're missing the whole point I'm trying to make here. To make things change, that change has a law of reciprocity. All right, so with the same measure you give, it should be given back to you. If you go search those scriptures that's talking about forgiveness, it ain't talking about a dollar. Mm. Now, you can use it for a dollar. <laughs> but it ain't talking about that. If you read the whole chapter of context, it's talking about forgiveness. Now, how are you going to forgive somebody if you got the Holy Ghost? Shunda, Shunda. You got the Holy Ghost, but you got irregard somebody. How are you going to pray them through? I'm talking about people we know. I ain't talking about. I'm talking about people we meet or people that treat us wrong. Because if God allowed them to do us wrong in our face, that means we might be the only person that He can trust to intercede with pure love to the throne for you. Unless we call somebody and say, "You just can't believe this." God gonna show him, and He gonna straighten them out. God said He won't judge you. You'll make it to heaven. He just finds somebody else. But then we come to church on Sunday. Use me, Lord. You. I told y'all I was talking about Jim. Okay, I remember where I was. I was a bad dude. <laughs> and so it took a while to arrive where I am today. And my God, I'm looking forward to the next 22 or more years. All right? Uh, in the Lord. Uh, whatever, how many times God give me. It is essential that you have a, a discipline at least once a week, at least four hours if you're on meds, to eight hours of fasting. It's it, it essential. Denying self, Jesus said, is the hallmark of a disciple. Deny self, taking up your cross, that's dying, and a follower. All right, so you have three things that are responsible in order to become a disciplined one. And you can't leave out denying self and say, I got the cross. Or you can take up the cross, I'm following, but I, I, I'm not, I mean, I deny myself, but I'm not going to take up the cross, but I'll be your follower. You got to do all three. And he repeats it more than once. So people, you got to take what God has given us. And there are a number of different fasts in the Bible. We're not going to talk a lot about fasts, but fast is essential in this particular teaching today on the deeds of the flesh. But there are a number of different fasts, and all of the fasts, it should be a regiment of devotion and love 
and not an assessment to tell God how to go straighten somebody out. So how do we walk in the spirit? I heard a lot about the flesh, but we are not finished because we talked about the deeds of the flesh today. But I got to give you some things. We walk by faith. And we do this by meditating on God's promises day and night and resting in them. Now, when we enter into the Sabbath rest of God, it's a rest where we cease from our works. Uh, it's not a Saturday. But, but I'll help people. They walk me around the country in different places. And I find out and discover that they'll uh, end the Saturday. It doesn't bother me if you want to have an extra day. All right, but I'm doing it every day. But I won't say anything, but I'm not uncomfortable with them because I don't think that'll keep them out of heaven. It's other things that we might pick up in our doctrines. You see what I'm saying? we got to learn how to have some grace there, all right? Because the, the, the grace in you that God is using, the love, is what draws people to say, where you go? I want to go with you. Well, y'all got private Friday night? That's it. But when they see you sharp, like the principal, hey, hey. <laughs> And you don't, don't put on your best sharp, sharpness when you're talking to somebody, especially another minister. Leave a little something out of there so they can feel like they're helping you. And then you got to know what to say. At the meetings I, I taught in early years when I was working at Exxon Mobile, the Church of Christ came. The Jehovah Witnesses came. You know why? Because they understood schizophrenia and they said everybody was demon. They agreed with it. And so they didn't mind who wanted to hear what I had to say about it. I could have blocked them all out by saying, well, let's straighten your doctrine out first. But Jesus set the captive free and they became followers. So we got to get all that criticalness out of us. All of it. We should be trusting in, in the Lord all the time. The more we think about our dependence upon Him, the more consistent we will be in trusting Him and walking in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit implies that we are maintaining an ongoing communion with our God. It ought to be 24-7. He got the spiritual lights on me. Everything I do or say ought to catch me within three to eight seconds after I blow it. Or maybe a little later. Because he has told me the next day you was wrong. <laughs> but on regular stuff on a daily basis, that, com that conviction ought to be right there because he's showing me love. He didn't want the devil to get a foot. And says, we didn't throw the devil out. We don't want him to get a stronghold back in Jesus' name. So you got to read the scripture. He said, then you shall cast out demons. He didn't say he was going to do it for you. He didn't already done it for you. We are exercising those spiritual disciplines that keep our hearts focused upon the Lord that turns our feet away from sin, that warms our love for Christ by walking in the Word. In fact, in Ephesians, it says, walk in love. It starts off the chapter probably three, I'm not sure. But if you don't walk in love, you will be destroyed. That's a consequence of that. Pastor Dean, our pastor, who was going on to be with the Lord in 2012, February, uh, he was an analytical minister. He was an engineer by trade, but you wouldn't know it. You'd have to know his credentials because he never acted. You just never knew it. <laughs> he just he could relate to you just readily. And but he always gave us the, uh, an assessment, and then he gave us uh, it's a term a teaching we do allegory or whatever. And then he would say, "Well, what's the opposite of that? What's the what's the but to that? What's the you know?" Have you, he, he would get us to think, all right. And so hopefully we'll be thinking today that if we don't walk in love, then the consequences of not walking in love, we will be destroyed. Now the preacher ain't supposed to be telling you nothing like that, I know that, I, I, I agree. Because I don't want anybody destroyed, but it's a truth. It's a truth that we need to, to measure up to and admit that that is a, a truth to that. Um, destruction comes in many ways. Uh, it doesn't mean a, the actual decease of a, of a believer. It just means that some, some things that we dealt with, we won't understand the ministry of God's long suffering in us and tempers in us, and the fruit will not be able to manifest in us, and we'll just keep banging our head against problems until we stop resisting the Holy Spirit and obey. Walk <laughs> in love. Walking by the Spirit involves patterning your life after Jesus Christ. All you need to do is open your Bible, study for the rest of your life about His work, about His person. Your whole life should be centered 
on Jesus Christ. It is the Spirit's work to point you to Jesus Christ. Therefore, if you're walking in the Spirit, you are automatically going to focus on Jesus Christ. I would want to focus on it. And I have to deal with casting out strongholds, imaginaries, everything to try to exalt yourself against the mind, mind of Christ. Dreams, thoughts, telephone calls, email. All that is just part of life, okay? It doesn't mean it gets in your life. you got to be able to displace that stuff. You realize it and declare uh, Romans 6 that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Behold, all things become new. I didn't quote the right particular scripture and chapter on that, but where I want to go is that you have been crucified with Christ and you're dead. Reckon the old man dead and you're alive through Christ. Now that's Romans 6. And Galatians 5, 17, very, and we had a, in the fifth chapter, we work in the fifth chapter of Galatians. And uh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. This should make it clear that no one escapes this particular conflict. No one can avoid the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. No one gets a free Christian life from outward pressure or be free from outward pressure and inward turmoil. We walk a hard road fighting every day to stay on the right path. God made it this way. Jesus showed us the way. Three and a half years in the midst of all of that conflict. He showed us that we, we can make it. Through Christ Jesus we can do all things. Amen? Amen. <laughs> to live by the flesh is dependent upon the resources and the abilities of the physical body or humanness. To live by the Spirit is dependent upon the resources and abilities of the Spirit whom God gives by grace through faith. Now there's some defined uh, characteristics in, in uh, the fifth chapter of Galatians 19 through 21. There are some defined characteristics that, that list the deeds of the flesh. There are also some characteristics that God has given the church in the list in verses 22 to 23 that deals with the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when you're dealing with the flesh, God, some of you may have different translations. All right, and so I'm going to use the King James translation, any uh, 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 BA uh, uh, translation. I, I have to double check it, but uh, and there are some other um, amplified translations that may have just some words different, but they do mean the same. And Galatians 5:19 it says, "Now the works of the flesh are manifest." Now. <laughs> When we look at manifest, uh, that word also tra is translated evident. So in other words, it's, called, it's like we can look in, the, in the society where things have changed when they remove prayer out of schools. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of other things have taken place in, in society where God is not allowed in. We've seen the consequences of that. It's evident. Right. Okay, so that's why I'm saying this word manifest means evident as well. So broad basis as well as an individual basis. Which of these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance. Oh, various. I learned something from Mary Hickley about 25 years ago. She was teaching. I had I hadn't seen or heard any messages in three, four years. Uh, but uh, I remember she was teaching, and I was a young man in the Lord, and she was talking about they was having a church meeting. And they were deciding on what they was going to eat uh, for the banquet or something like that. And I've used this often. And they, they set out and made a decision and what kind of vegetables and the bread and the meat. And that they were closing out the prayer meeting. And everything was over with. And somebody raised their hand up. I think I can get the, the chicken cheaper. It was over with. <laughs> they already decided on the prison. So they, they have some people just have a spirit of parents just want to have something different, just contrary. And I never forgot that. So I kept my, my clothes as I came up the ranks. <laughs> I get up, I sit around and leave out of me. <laughs> but they call me, I had nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, I learned that, but she, she taught me a lesson that day. I said, Thank you, Jesus. Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such a life, which I tell you before, as I also told you in the past, that they that do such things shall not, uh oh, inherit the kingdom of God. Now I can tell you about end time and uh, I know I don't spend a lot of time dealing with revelations but it's there an implication in our regular teachings. 
uh, God is so gracious. There's going to be a, a, group, a great number of harvests that God's going to bring into the kingdom. I know there's going to be uh, uh, a thin line there because uh, narrow is the way that we go to heaven. <clears throat> but there, there, is a, there is a degree of 30, 60, and 100 fold. There is a, uh, 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 a degree of the, the, the gentleman that was on the cross with Jesus. He said, this day you shall be with me. All right, so, that, so we're going to be surprised <laughs> because some people hadn't been in the Lord like us 35 to 50 years. Don't get in on, on prayer in the emergency room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so <clears throat> we need to understand that, that. So when I'm talking about um, the flesh here, I'm not talking about the carnal nature. I'm talking about walking after the flesh. All right? I'm talking about in your humanity. In fact, I'm going to define it as perhaps you ought to revisit your salvation, see if you're saved. All right? Because the flesh is supposed to be crucified. Jesus said that when he went to Calvary's cross, he conquered all enemies. And the enemy, and our enemy was the flesh, uh, demons, and self. So anyway, I, I, I'll go some more into that in a moment. But in reading these uh, descriptions of the flesh that we just looked at here a moment ago, we must recognize that it is also expressed that these manifestations, uh, uh, and the word used here is evident, uh, also indicate that if they're not dealt with, and the flesh is not dealt with in our lives, if we give uh, uh, permission to the flesh to, to, to control our lives, then we give a door also for demons uh, in that flesh, and the demons will manifest, and they will become evidence. They will be evident. So this is what the flesh produces. This is what you get when you walk in the flesh. As we look at these ugly deeds of the flesh, please keep in mind that Paul said in verse 16, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. If you don't want to see these deeds of the flesh manifest in your life, and they're demons, then you have to learn to walk by the Spirit. Now, in some areas I'm, I'm challenged by having to share this with you because, like I say, I'm asking God to seed in my life that I can pray for the harvest. I'm not talking about no money, by the way. Uh, there's no way in the Bible it talks about sowing seed and money. It talks about the seed of the Word of God. That's what grows. And, uh, of course, they probably can use it like that, but I, I've never used that word. <clears throat> and so, so while I'm ministering to you, I'm under the light of conviction as well. Alright? It may not appear that way to you, so I have to tell it to you sometimes because you may see, I mean, just total coherence and authority and positivity in this. But ministers need to let you know that while we're teaching, that many times we are under that light too, we can feel it. <laughs> you need to know this. It's kind of like uh, we had a couple of young people play sports this weekend. Uh, Lakers, they won. Uh, the uh, Westbrook Bruins, they won. By a large score, it was 36 to 6, uh, 64 to something, 20 or something like that. And uh, so these boys played ball, stuff like that. But uh, um, they realized that in the midst of the game, that they're under the umbrella of a team. And that it's a cooperative effort by all participants in that team to uh, reach their victories. And that when they walk off the field, they have to lead the game on the field. And go back to being Kamala Day. Amen. Amen. And R.J. Jackson. And they do that because they understand it. You can't carry that thing around. Well, we got some, unfortunately, in the church that want to carry it. All right? And uh, I, I have to deal with it. Uh, even walking into the bleachers from a football game, I, I look at myself to make sure because I, I realize a lot of people go to games and the grandparents and they want you know, they got their shoulder pads on 40 years ago. Yeah. So I put my hands down. I'm just telling you the truth. I put my hands down. Because I, I don't want that baseball walk. I had the mobile all walk. we got to go on that tower right there. So you got to practice dealing with that too. You're not going to beat the big boys if you can't deal with these small fries. you got to deal with them. Uh, the Bible talks about um, 
A lot of preaching with your heads. So you got to be careful to use your heads. Uh, they laughed at Jesus on the cross. <laughs> all that joking in the book. So you have to, all that you got to put under, under your, and you got to deal with it. You got to get it right. It takes time. But it also, it, the clock needs to be turned on. If the clock is turned off, then you're in legalism. <clears throat> when you look at what Paul said in verse 21, of which I forewarn you, just as I forewarn you, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There's a word here in this passage of scripture called practice. Now I was talking about how the light was on me, so I hope y'all got something got the best out of that. The word practice here is from the Greek word P-R-A-S-S-W. I'm going to try to pronounce it as prosol, which is a verb, and that means habitual practice, a habit. It is not the P-O-I-E-W word, O-E, for occasionally do it. So when Paul's talking about it, he's talking about habitual practice, people. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Habitual is not occasionally messing up. God's grace is for his church. He loves us. And so there are going to be different degrees, and many people are going to make it who are totally absent from a lot of things that God is trying to share to them that is foundational. So just don't throw everybody to the curb. <laughs> God is full of grace and mercy. If the day he saved me, the day, the day that early that morning, around 3 that morning in my apartment, on I-10, sitting on, my, on the side of my bed, because I was, I, I, I was talking to God. When his spirit came to me, if he took me that day, I would have made it in, and everybody in the funeral would say, liar, liar, pencil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. They would all say, oh, 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 oh. My wife messed up my friend. I say, when they call you, when, when they use Jimmy Landry, that, they, uh, I was at the barbershop one day. A guy came in and said, Jimmy Landry, you don't believe me? I said, man, yeah. And he just went all around about all the dirt I had done. <laughs> 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 and I just laid there with him every day like that. Had a good time, just talking stuff like that. And, uh, and I let it go because I knew he, he's a deacon at the, my friend's uh, 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 church at the wedding. I mean, in uh, Kirkville, and I said he gonna get him later. Say, man, Jim Landry saved man. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta see what you're dealing with. Here. I didn't disagree because everything he said was the truth. And one of my friends, uh, 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 Colbert, got the big church down there. Him ran the street so hard. We gotta say we've been friends ever since. I can't go over there on a few days. Okay. They call and ask about delivery stuff like that. I can't help nobody if I got judgment against them. Right. Okay, I'm just trying to help them. I'm going to keep as long as I came up and started uh, sharing the, 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 the teachings with you. Once a believer begins their dependence upon the flesh, adjusting their lifestyle and religious walk in the flesh, it becomes a habitual walk, although they occasionally can be in the spirit. They have given permission to the demons called by these manifestations to live, in it, live, it, live their evils through them. Have you ever walked with or ministered with an individual who loves the Lord, and one day you discover they have some strange, unscriptural doctrine that they hold to as a truth? And you wonder, how did they go there? Habitual error and flesh open the doors for the demons to come in and take over. And the demons are nothing but error. They hate the truth. Now the Spirit is speaking expressly that in the latter days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. We have been warned. We have been warned. Don't take the devil for granted. We are in a war. you got to make your mind up which team you're going to fight with. You can't say, well, I don't have a deliverance ministry. God's giving me a healing ministry. Well, that's not true. All right, because he gave the, the 70 others who were called with the same apostolic authority as the 12 in Luke, the 10th chapter, and he sent them to go out on the healing ministry. They came back with joy, and they told Jesus that even the demons were subject to us. So you can't say I just got a healing ministry just to cop out on deliverance. Now, there are people that have, some people that have a gift in them. Some don't know it. Some know it. And they, they don't use it because they don't want nobody to think that they think they better somebody because they used to 
He used to bump off me all the time, but I was thinking everybody come over here and pray. And, uh, and so they, you have to force, you almost have to get around them because they don't want to reach out to you too much for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a, uh, just humility. I don't know. But yeah, some people do have, because otherwise God's word wouldn't be true. He gives some gifts of faith, gifts of healing. Come on now. That's the truth, right? And so our job is to build that gift up in you. And uh, have you ever walked with uh, uh, someone that uh, say they love the Lord, but then they testimony is consistently about what the problems they're going through? You can't love the Lord in one mouth and talk about how good he is and then talk about all of your problems in the second mouth. You can have problems, but you, the Bible makes it very clear as you confess, it shall be confessed unto you. In other words, for the, for the same you you call the same judgment, it should be judged back to you. And I'll use the word judgment because that's very true and accurate. In other words, we have to be very careful what we confess with our mouth because you will have what you confess. And if you don't deal with it in repentance quickly, it may not show up for twenty years. So you have to remember when you curse yourself because that's flesh. To repent because there are consequences of what we say against ourselves and what we say against others, especially others that God has his grace on. Guess what? It boomerang back against you. You judge and you shall be judged in like measure that you judged out, not the measure they deserve. They don't deserve nothing. They deserve my prayer and intercession because God revealed them to me and they got an issue. Because he trusted me to be able to pray for them in purity, not yeah, God will show them what they need. That's, ooh, that's a nasty spirit. Woo! I saw that when I was in legalism. I remember, I remember going to sit down with a friend. He had built a church out the side of the neighborhood. He died. And he, I sat down and he said, I'm sorry, sir. Yo, man, that's why I said that. <laughs> now, here I am trying to seek. I'm seeking God. I'm trying to find God. It didn't do nothing to me because... I was a businessman, so I was used to editing. So that's what you feel, that's fine. Now I kind of sell you some insurance. So I was ready to switch quick anyway. I had it in. Some people don't have it in, and they turn around and say, What made you that seat? <laughs> Come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you might have had that in. You might say, Why well, ain't I talking about repeating that? Yeah, because I was a bad, bad person. All right. This is the day. Repentance. What about the Spirit of God? And, and, uh, Galatians 5, 22 said, but the, 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 the fruit of God's Spirit in us is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such that is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Brethren, all the fruit of God are grounded on one principle, love. So you you can't have this in right balance if you have what you consider to be a legal right to unlove somebody. We were ministering over 20 years ago at a big, big, big facility. I don't know, probably a few hundred people in the, in the audience for the deliverance night, but it holds 3,000. And I forgot what the message I taught on, but the person that manifested, oh, they, a lot of manifestations. I know it's dogs were barking, cats were meowing. <laughs> they were coming up. The pastor agreed with deliverance. He just didn't believe that Christians had the demons, but he knew they needed to be delivered, some people. And that's fine. That's fine. And, uh, and so this one individual <laughs> came up there, and I, I and I, I always bind the demons, because not to embarrass God's people, they all, I'm on a big stage. So I'm trying to bind them down, so now I can talk to the person, so I'm going to command the spirit out of you now. God, it wasn't going down. It wasn't going down. And I, I'm trying to keep them up. All right, you caught out, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm doing everything I know how to do, because I'm so far away from the crowd, they don't know what's going on. <clears throat> and if I get a word of knowledge, that it's unforgiveness. And when I said unforgiveness, I think my wife or somebody else said, you got to forgive your dad. That person said, oh, no. And I wrote it in the book right there, judging your parents. 
So if you don't remember it, read it in there. You get the whole gist of what happened. That's, these are actual things that take place. I'm not using other people's testimonies. Uh, and once, uh, then we had follow-up uh, here uh, at uh, Ted Rush's house, one of our minister staff is going to be with the Lord, and uh, much older uh, gentleman at the time. And, uh, uh, and we followed up with that. And, 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 uh, um, and so I pray that all went well after all those sessions, and they are still living a very fruitful life. A life. Because the husband and I see each other all the time. He's actually a uh, postmaster, uh, but not in Boba, so I won't tell you where he's at. <laughs> and uh, so we see each other, we got my books and all that. And I never asked him, how's your wife doing? Because they do it. I don't need to go behind, nothing like that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> First Corinthians, the 13th chapter, talks about love, love, love God's people. Love. Love, love. That's the love chapter. We're just going to get a few verses of this because I want to finish out this lesson today. I'm going to change some of the words. It says, charity suffer love, but I'm going to say love suffer love. And it's kind. Love and be it not. Love, bone it not, lift it not up itself. It's not puffed up. Do it not behave itself unseemly. Seek it not her own. Is not easily provoked. Think it no evil. Oh, that's a good one them. I definitely want that mind renewed in me. Thank you, Jesus. Rejoice it not in iniquity. Don't rejoice because somebody going down because they messed over you. But rejoice it in truth. Bear it all things. Believe it all things. Hope it all things. Endure it all things. Love never fail it. Galatians 5.13 Our text is coming from the book of Galatians. We're going to remain there, as I mentioned earlier today. God gave us a word, and I'm almost finished. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Isn't that what he's telling us in, in Corinthians? Serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Do we love our neighbors? That don't mean you have to eat with them, go shop with them. But you have to present yourself in a way where you're casual, how are you? Sometimes it's difficult if somebody's already raised up a wall against you, and God have to tear that wall down. We had in praise and worship this morning. In a song, by the way, if you missed them, I think it was a big, big battle with you here. It was. <laughs> and, uh, and so sometimes it can be a little difficult. And sometimes it's okay. We have to just walk around and, 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 and people snare and snare and all that. And you can hear them grunting underneath, you know. <clears throat> oh, we were born. 35 years ago. You know too much about me. And, uh, and so, uh, so sometimes, but we still got treated good. Uh, you know, things, things are all happening. And so there are times. You know, when we have some issues with neighbors and things like that. <clears throat> but we ought to love our neighbors as thyself. Now, if you, I'm not asking you to look amongst you, but you're looking at each other. We are neighbors. We are neighbors in the house of God. <laughs> Jesus is the head. <laughs> so if you think I'm talking about outside these walls only, uh -uh. Because I'm in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm a Christian. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now the Bible says, it'll be on the video, or it'll be on Facebook, or one of the other videos. You may not be able to keep up with these scriptures, but I want to conclude with these uh, uh, several scriptures. It says, 1 John 5, 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep His commandments. 1 John 4, 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelling in us, and his love is perfected in us. It's an ongoing process. 1 John 4, 16. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Good company. 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loves it is born of God and knoweth God. God is love. 
there's only one way to overcome the flesh, people. Only one way to live a life different from the works of the flesh that Paul has described here, and that is by walking in the Spirit. Walking by the Spirit. This is only possible by love. It's only possible by love. When you were born again, your old nature, the flesh, was crucified. If you still have your old nature, then you might want to revisit your salvational experiences uh, because the devil does have counterfeits. Um, some of you have heard my testimony. I was raised a Catholic, a Christian, a Methodist, baptized a Baptist, and attempted to lodge Muhammad, joined a Baptist church, spoke at my pastor's anniversary, drove the church bus, and so I had to revisit mine. I'm, I'm giving you my personal I revisited it and realized when my old nature became crucified, I realized what I got born again. Jimmy Carter, when he was running for the presidency in the 1970s, uh, he was a very gentle, peanut farmer kind of guy. He had a brother that told a lot of jokes. They were corny. <laughs> and Jimmy stood up there in his uh, campaign for the presidency, and he stood up, and he told him, and he was careful, because you can tell the way his mouth was moving like he said, I'm born again. It went all over national news. What does he mean? <laughs> uh, by the way, I had that on video. You can actually watch it. The actual day that he made that statement. I'm born again. It went all through the news. Like, what does that mean? Then the church decided we're going to take it all the way in now. We're going all the way with born again. Songs came out and everything. Romans 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. What a convenient way to close out this message today. That the body of sin might be destroyed, and henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is free, excuse me, he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Now for the young people, when I'm talking about dead with Christ, I mean to the old uh, um, appetites, to the old be characteristics to the old behaviors and we have crucified that we have applied the cross to it and said we're going to follow God and what God's will is and God's direction for our life I, mean, I would have let it ring okay, <laughs> glad to see it ring it works we, we changed the phone phone out put our cell phone back there and it's good <laughs> finally God's command to each of us today from Galatians 5.16 this is where we started. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. From the King James Version, that was the NASB Version. From the King James Version, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? Amen. My Father, I put Satan on notice, and I'm attacking him for my position in Christ Jesus, which places us high above all principalities, powers, world rulers, and dominions. And from the third heaven, we take authority over the strong man over the flesh. We bind him right now. We bind, uh, we bind all of the demons that uh, use religious spirits, uh, demons, uh, 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 the manifestations from the, uh, the ones that we know about, uh, and those that we don't know about, all of the manifestations of the flesh that were listed in Galatians 5, 21, 19 through 21. We take authority over those strong men and the rest of them mentioned throughout the whole Bible. We bind them in the name of Jesus. We bind the uh, uh, Goliath spirit, uh, the, the, the divine spirit, I defy the owners of God. I defy God. All those are the flesh. That's the old humanity. That's humanity. We bind that spirit. We, if we have some difficulties in our life right now, and it's due because of uh, an entrapment somewhere in our life, we've come conflicted with God's word before or after salvation, and we're having some wrestling problems in our life, and it may be centered because there's a strong man in the flesh there. And we can't see him because we've got a comfort zone and don't realize that he's still there. It's kind of like when I was a young man, to remember stuff, I tied a string around my pinky finger. Or when I got a little something after I quit smoking cigarettes, after God took me out of the cigarette, to be correct that, uh, then I would chew a snicker bar. Got the penis between my gums. That took care of the discomfort in my, in my gums. That was called the uh, addiction from the cigarette tobacco. Or when I stopped drinking the beer and I started drinking 12 Dr. Peppers. I had to cut all that out. If there's a strong man somewhere hiding that we hadn't dealt with, all right, we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. We command him, and all of us, right, with our own mouth, we say, get out of us. Yeah. Go in Jesus' name. You go. We release the kingdom of 
God, the Spirit of the Lord, we walk after the Spirit, walk in love. In Jesus' name. All right, God bless y'all. We love y'all. God bless you.